In this video, I will walk you through the installation process of the Nervio Manager for WVD application from the Azure Marketplace. We'll start out on the install guide uh, knowledge base article in the Nervio Manager for WVD Help Center. And we'll go through this process and actually show you how the deployment is done. It's actually a pretty straightforward process. But before we get started, let's review the prerequisites, which is really the first part of the process, phase number one. And let's go through these to make sure that it's clear what is necessary to begin. Number one is we need to be logged into the Azure portal as a global administrator of the Azure AD tenant into which we'll be installing the Nerdio Manager application and registering it as an app registration. This is required. There is really no way to work around needing a global administrator uh, role for this part of the process. Uh, there are some advanced installation capabilities that are also available that may split up the service principle creation process from the rest of the install, but we will assume a more quick, simple installation process for our demo here. If you have a specific requirement uh, or a restriction with global administrator, please reach out to Nerdio Manager support at nmw.support at getnerdio.com. So that is requirement number one. Global administrator must be logged in, and that same user must also be an owner of an Azure subscription where we will be installing Nerdio Manager for WVD. Um, the subscription into which we'll be installing Nerdio Manager must be able to deploy Azure SQL, a app service web application, Key Vault, App Insights, and automation accounts in whatever region you choose during the install process. So if there are any restrictions or limitations on the subscription, um, those must include the ability to deploy these types of PaaS services. We also must have a virtual network and a subnet within that virtual network available. This is going to be the VNet and subnet where the WVD session host VMs are going to be created. And um, we also must have Windows Active Directory or Azure ADDS deployment already created before we start the Nerdio Manager deployment process. And the Active Directory must be accessible from the virtual network where the WVD session host VMs will be deployed. So the step number four, needing this network, means that this network must also be able to access Active Directory installation within the Azure environment or through some sort of express route or a site-to-site -site VPN tunnel to where the domain controllers are. One of the requirements is that the DNS servers must be set to custom and those custom DNS server settings must be pointing at a DNS server that is AD aware so that when VMs are created, they can join the Active Directory automatically. We also must have our Active Directory automatically synchronized to Azure AD if we are using traditional Windows Active Directory or if we're using Azure AD DS, that's already taken care of. We will also need an Active Directory user account that has the ability to join and unjoin VMs from the domain. Join means be able to create a computer account within at least one OU, organizational unit, and have the ability to disable these computer objects in that OU. So that is the minimum level of access required for that account that we'll need. Finally, if we're using FSLogix for profile storage, which is typically used in most WVD deployments, we are going to need an SMB file share uh, to store FSLogix profile containers. This SMB file share could be on a VM, it could be on Azure Files, it could be in Azure NetApp Files, or really any other location that's accessible via UNC path in this type of a format. Um, we're gonna need the FQDN format of the server to specify during the setup wizard. And then finally, the Microsoft Desktop Virtualization Resource Provider must be registered in your Azure subscription. The good news is, is if you have a WVD deployment already, if you've spun up even a single host, you likely already meet all of these requirements. And that means we can proceed with phase number two, which is the actual installation process 
and we're going to flip back to this tab that I have opened, which is our uh, Azure portal, and we're going to search for Nerdio Manager for WVD. Let's go ahead and select this one right here. Um, once that opens up, we're going to click Create. And the only thing we really need to provide is the subscription into which we'll be deploying this. Again, remember the user who's currently logged in must be a global administrator and the subscription owner of the subscription selected here. And then we can either choose an existing resource group, which is completely empty, or we can click to create a new one. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new one and call it uh, NMW App uh, RG. Click OK. It's going to get created during the deployment process. And then we go and choose the region where the Nerdio Manager application will be deployed. Now, this selection is independent of where your WVD environment or where your session hosts are actually going to be. This is just the location of the Nerdio Manager for WVD application. And it can control a WVD deployment that spans many other regions, multiple regions, whether it's the same one or a different one doesn't really matter. So I'm going to choose South Central US for our example and click on Next to review. Once it's going to validate that all the resources can be created, I can go ahead and click Create, which is going to begin the deployment process. This process will take about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So we are going to speed up this and come back to it once it is fully deployed. Once the deployment is complete, we need to find the URL of the app service. So we're simply going to click on go to resource group. That's going to show us all the various resources that were deployed as part of the Nerdio Manager for WVD deployment. You can see the app service, the SQL database, the automation account, everything we covered in the prerequisites uh, phase of this process. And what we'll do is we will click on the app service and locate the URL for the application, which is right here, just copy to clipboard. And we can even click browse, which is going to open it up in a new tab. Once it's open, we're going to be presented with uh, the option to register the application in the Azure AD tenant. And this is where our permissions become really critical. Again, we need to be logged in as a global administrator and the subscription owner. Whether or not MFA is enabled is not important. MFA can be on or can be off. Uh, as long as we're logged in and have those permissions, we will be able to register the application. Now, there's two ways to do it. We can simply run this PowerShell script in Azure Cloud Shell, which is what we're going to do now. Um, if we want to see what the actual script is going to be, we can click this button that says Show Full Script, and it will show us the entire set of uh, commands that are going to run. But all we really need is to copy this uh, script and run it. But before we do that, I want to show you what an advanced installation will look like. So if we wanted to perform a more advanced installation, not an automated one that would leverage Azure Cloud Shell, but instead install using a local PowerShell script, we can click on Show Advanced. And under Show Advanced, we have several different options. You know, if we don't check anything in this section, we can simply click on Download Script, which is going to be uh, an AZ-based PowerShell script. Once it's downloaded, we can run it and go through the prompts that will come up. But there are several things that we could um, enable inside of that script before downloading it. For example, we can check this box that says use existing Azure AD app registration. This would be used if you wanted to pre-create an Azure AD app registration uh, before doing the install. This would then not require global admin rights. It does require some advanced work, which is uh, all the details are available under this learn more button, all the prerequisites for what you need to do. And then you would provide these three inputs, download the script, run it locally, and the installation process would complete. So that's option number one. Option number two is we can specify the name of the application registration inside of the Azure AD tenant. This is going to be the default name. 
but you can change it to something else. And again, download the script and run it, and that would register it under a different name. And the third option is what we call split identity. Split identity deployment allows you to have the Nerdio, uh, I'm sorry, the WVD identity objects uh, like the um, host pools and app groups and workspaces in your identity tenant where your usernames and passwords are while putting the VMs for the session hosts in a completely separate tenant uh, could even be in a completely separate cloud like Azure Government Cloud as an example. If you wanted to use this option, you would specify the identity tenant ID right here and again, download the script and run it on your local machine with local admin rights. Again, everything is fully documented under this learn more button to give you information of what you need. But for the purposes of our demo, we are going to use the quick install, which is copying this PowerShell script, launching Azure Cloud Shell. Uh, this will come up and ask us if we want to use Bash or PowerShell. We are going to select PowerShell. We can select our subscription where to create a small storage account to run the Azure Cloud Shell. So that's what's happening right now. It's creating that storage account. If you already have one created, you will not see uh, this prompt coming up. So we're going to just give this a few more seconds to finish creating. And then once it logs in and authenticates, again, as the user who is currently logged in, that's the key, this user must have global admin and subscription owner rights. Once we get a prompt, we are going to authenticate. We are just simply going to paste that script and press enter. And this is going to begin the installation process, um, which if we want to see exactly what it's doing, this is the script that it's actually running. And you can see the script is fully serialized. It has all the information specific to your unique registration. Um, and, and it's basically running all of these commands right now. It will take um, you know, about five to 10 minutes or so to run. And once it's done, we will be able to proceed with phase number three, which is the quick setup wizard that's gonna walk us step-by-step uh, through collecting the information we need to continue with the WVD installation. Um, if we flip back to our uh, installation guide, so we've completed, completed uh, phase two and we're now in phase three. And during this phase is when this script is running and we're going to come back to this in just a couple of minutes once this process is complete. Now the registration script is complete. We can either click on this link that's listed here, or we can just go back to this page and refresh it. And this is going to begin the next phase of the installation process, which is our wizard that's gonna walk us through the configuration of the environment. So let's go ahead and take a look um, at this page. We can see that the Azure AD tenant and Azure subscription are already selected and deployed. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is just go down this list. First thing we'll do is register Nerdio Manager for WVD. So let's call this Nerdio Installation Demo. Um, and name. Give this an email address. And click register. This is going to register Nerdio Manager. The next thing we'll need to do is select a network. Remember, one of the prerequisites was to have a network that will um, uh, that will be accessible or that will be able to access Active Directory uh, environments. So let's go ahead and select uh, a resource group that contains that network. I believe it's this one. Uh, select VNet2. LAN, click OK, and that's going to select our network right here. Once the network is selected, then we can choose a resource group. By default, the resource group that's going to be selected will be the one where Nerdio Manager application is installed, but you can easily change this by clicking here uh, and then choosing another resource group if you want from the list. 
it's possible to link multiple networks and multiple resource groups once Nerdio Manager is deployed. So you're not really, you know, making a, a huge commitment by selecting these, but you do need to choose one resource group and at least one network before proceeding. Then we need to configure Active Directory. So we're going to click on Active Directory. We need to give this a name. So let's say it's going to be called domain.local. Our username is going to be administrator at domain.local. We'll specify a password. And then we will specify an OU. Let's say um, OU is WVD. Um, VC equals domain. VC equals local or we can leave this blank and that's going to just automatically create the computer objects in the computer's container in active directory click ok these values are not validated so whatever you specify here please be sure that this is correct the username must be in either upn format or domain slash username make sure your domain is an fqdn format the password is correct and the user account has the permissions to create and disable computer objects in this OU. Then we'll go to the file storage option. We'll select uh, this option right here. We can either skip this if we're not going to be using FS logics, or we can specify um, a path here. So we can say, you know, server.domain.local, you know, share name profiles, right? Something like that. Click OK. And then our final selection is going to be our WVD object model. For vast majority of deployments, we're going to be using the ARM general availability, also known as the Spring 2020 update, but we could also use the Fall 2019 release or even a hybrid where you can manage both at the same time. I'll choose the Spring 2020 and click Done. This is then going to add the necessary permissions to my tenant and ask me to go ahead and grant those consents. So what's going to come up is going to be a link like this. We're going to click on it. That will open up another tab asking us to log in, show us a list of permissions that we need to accept. Once accepted, it will tell us consent is granted. So let's go ahead and close this tab, come back to this page, confirm that we have done the consent granting, and click OK. This is going to validate that all the consents have been granted. And here we go, lo and behold, we have Nerdio Manager fully deployed in this new environment. It's currently in trial mode for the first 30 days. Uh, and you are ready to go. This is now fully installed. And if you need to add uh, any additional networks or resource groups, that's done from the settings Azure environment page. You can link additional networks, additional resource groups, even additional tenants and subscriptions. So that completes our uh, walkthrough. Uh, for the Nerdio Manager for WVD installation process using Azure Cloud Shell. Hope you found this video useful and look forward to seeing you in future videos.